Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 19, Hadith Number 173. Narrated by Abdullah bin Masuda, the Prophet recited Surat An Najm, 103, at Mecca and prostrate while reciting it, and those who were with him did the same except an old man who took a handful of small stones or earth and lifted it to his forehead and said, This is sufficient for me. Later on, I saw him killed as a non believer. Sahih Bukhari, Volume 2, Book 19, Hadith Number 174. Narrated by Abu Huraira, on Fridays the Prophet used to recite Alf Lam Mim Tanzalaz Sajda, in the first Rukah, and Hal Adil Al Lansani i.e. Suratad Dar, Lsksi, in the second Rukah, in the Fajr prayer. Sahih Bukhari, Volume 2, Book 19. Hadith number 175. Narrated by Ibn Abbas, the prostration of Sad is not a compulsory one, but I saw the Prophet prostrating while reciting it. Sahih Bukhari, Volume 2, Book 19, Hadith number 176. Narrated by Abdullah bin Maysud, the Prophet recited Surat An Najm, 53 and prostrate while reciting it and all the people prostrate and a man amongst the people took a handful of stones or earth and raised it to his face and said, this is sufficient for me. Later on I saw him killed as a non-believer. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 19, Hadith Number 177 Narrated by Ibn Abbas the Prophet I prostrate while reciting a Najm and with him prostrate the Muslims, the pagans, the jinns, and all human beings. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 19, Hadith Number 178 Narrated by Adda bin Yasar, I asked Zaid bin Thabit about prostration on which he said that he had recited a Najm before the Prophet, yet he, the Prophet, had not performed a prostration. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 19, Hadith Number 179 Narrated by Zaid bin Thabit, I recited a Najm before the Prophet, yet he did not perform a prostration. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 19, Hadith Number 180 Narrated by Abu Salma, I saw Abu Huraira reciting it Hasama Unjaktat and he prostrate during its recitation. I asked Abu Huraira, didn't I see you prostrating? Abu Huraira said, had I not seen the Prophet prostrating, I would not have prostrated. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 19, Hadith Number 181 Narrated by Ibn Umar when the Prophet recited a surah that contained the prostration he would prostrate and we would do the same and some of us, because of the heavy rush, could not find a place for prostration. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 19, Hadith Number 182 Narrated by Ibn Umar, when the Prophet recited Surat as Sajda and we were with him, he would prostrate and we also would prostrate with him and some of us, because of the heavy rush, would not find a place, for our foreheads, to prostrate on. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 19, Hadith Number 183 Narrated by Rubiyah, Umar bin Al-Khattab recited Surat an Nal on a Friday on the pulpit and when he reached the verse of Sajda he got down from the pulpit and prostrate and the people also prostrate. The next Friday Umar bin al-Khattab recited the same surah and when he reached the verse of Sajda he said, O oh people! When we recite the verses of Sajda, during the sermon, whoever prostrates does the right thing, yet it is no sin for the one who does not prostrate. And Umar did not prostrate, that day. Added Ibn Umar Allah has not made the prostration of recitation compulsory but if we wish we can do it. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 19, Hadith Number 184 Narrated by Abu Rafi, I offered the Isha prayer behind Abu Huraira and he recited it as Sama Unchaktat, and prostrate. I said, What is this? Abu Huraira said, 
I prostrate behind Abu al Qasim and I will do the same till I meet him. Sahih Bukhari, Volume 2, Book 19, Hadith Number 185. Narrated by Ibn Umar, whenever the Prophet recited the surah which contained the prostration of recitation, he used to prostrate and then, we, too, would prostrate and some of us did not find a place for prostration. Sahih Bukhari, Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith Number 186. Narrated by Ibn Abasa, the Prophet once stayed for 19 days and prayed shortened prayers. So when we travel led, and stayed, for 19 days, we used to shorten the prayer but if we traveled, and stayed, for a longer period we used to offer the full prayer. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith Number 187 Narrated by Yahya bin Ishaq, I heard Anna saying, We traveled with the Prophet from Medina to Mecca and offered two rakat, for every prayer, till we returned to Medina. I said, Did you stay for a while in Mecca? He replied, We stayed in Mecca for ten days. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith Number 188 Narrated by Abdullah bin Umar, I offered the prayer with the Prophet, Abu Bakr, and Umar at Mina and it was of two rakat. Uthman in the early days of his caliphate did the same, but later on he started praying the full prayer. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith Number 189 Narrated by Haritha bin Wahab, the Prophet I led us in the prayer at Mina during the peace period by offering two rakat. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith Number 190 Narrated by Abdur Rahman bin Yazid, we offered a four rakat prayer at Mina behind Ibn Affan. Abdullah bin Masud was informed about it. He said sadly, Truly to Allah we belong and truly to him we shall return. And added, I prayed to Rikat with Allah's Apostle at Mina and similarly with Abu Bakr and with Umar, during their caliphats. Dot. He further said, May I be lucky enough to have two of the four Rikat accepted, by Allah. Dot. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2 Book 20, Hadith Number 191 Narrated by Ibn Abbas, the Prophet and his companions reached Mecca in the morning of the fourth dual hijra reciting Talbaya, O Allah. We are obedient to your orders, we respond for to your call, intending to perform Hajj. The Prophet ordered his companions to assume the Layram for Umrah instead of Hajj, accepting those who had Hadi sacrifice, with them. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith Number 192 Narrated by Ibn Umar, the Prophet said, A woman should not travel for more than three days except with a Dimaram, i.e. a male with whom she cannot marry at all, e.g. her brother, father, grandfather, etc., or her own husband. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 20 Hadith number 193. Narrated by Ibn Umar, the Prophet said, A woman should not travel for more than three days except with a Dimaram. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith number 194. Narrated by Abu Huraira, the Prophet, P.B.U.H., said, it is not permissible for a woman who believes in Allah and the last day to travel for one day and night except with a maram. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith Number 195 Narrated by Anas ben Malika, offered four rakat of Zuhr prayer with the Prophet, P.B.U.H, at Medina and two rakat at Dul Hulayfa. i.e. shortened the ASR prayer. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith Number 196 Narrated by Aisha, when the prayers were first enjoined they were of two rakat each. Later the prayer in a journey was kept as it was but the prayers for non-travelers were completed. Azizuri said, 
I asked your way what made Aisha pray the full prayers, in journey, dot. He replied, she did the same as Uthman did. Sahib Akari Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith Number 197 Narrated by Abdullah ben Umar, I saw Allah's Apostle delaying the Makrib prayer till he offered it along with the Isha prayer whenever he was in a hurry during the journey. Salim narrated, Ibn Umar used to do the same whenever he was in a hurry during the journey. And Salim added, Ibn Umar used to pray the Makrib and Isha prayers together in al Dalafa. Salim said, Ibn Umar delayed the Makrib prayer because at that time he heard the news of the death of his wife Safiya bint Abi Ubaid. I said to him, the prayer, is due, dot. He said, go on. Again I said, the prayer, is due, dot. He said, go on, till we covered two or three miles. Then he got down, prayed and said, I saw the Prophet praying in this way, whenever he was in a hurry during the journey. Abdullah, ben Umar, added, whenever the Prophet was in a hurry, he used to delay the Makrib prayer and then offer three rikat, of the Makrib, and perform taslim, and after waiting for a short while, Ikama used to be pronounced for the Isha prayer when he would offer two rikat and perform taslim. He would never offer any optional prayer till the middle of the night, when he used to pray the Tahajud. Dot. Sahib Akari Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith Number 198 Narrated by Abdullah ben Amir, from his father who said, I saw the Prophet, P.B.U.H, offering the prayer on his mount, Rahila, whatever direction it took. Sahib Akari Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith Number 199 Narrated by Jabir bin Abdullah, the Prophet used to offer the Nawafal, while riding, facing a direction other than that of the Qibla. Sahib Akari Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith Number 200 Narrated by Nafi, Ibn Umar, while on a journey, used to offer the prayer and the Witra on his mount, Rahila. He said that the Prophet used to do so. Sahib Akari Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith Number 201 Narrated by Abdullah bin Dinar, on traveling, Abdullah bin Umar used to offer the prayer on his mount by signs whatever direction it took. Abdullah said that the Prophet used to do so. Sahib Akari Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith number 202. Narrated by Amir bin Rabi'a, I saw the Prophet on his mount praying the waffle by nodding his head, whatever direction he faced, but Allah's Apostle never did the same in offering the compulsory prayers. Narrated Salim at night Abdullah bin Umar used to offer the prayer on the back of his animal during the journey and never cared about the direction he faced. Ibn Umar said, Allah's Apostle used to offer the optional prayer on the back of his mount facing any direction and also used to pray the Witr on it but never offered the compulsory prayer on it. Sahib Bukhari Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith Number 203 Narrated by Jabir bin Abdullah, the Prophet used to pray, the Nawafal, on his mount facing east and whenever he wanted to offer the compulsory prayer, he used to dismount and face the Qibla. Sahib Akari Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith Number 204 Narrated by Anas ben Sirin, we went to receive Anas ben Malik when he returned from Sham and met him at a place called Anat Tamr. I saw him praying riding the donkey, with his face to this direction, i.e. to the left of the Qibla. I said to him, I have seen you offering the prayer in a direction other than that of the Qibla. He replied, if I had not seen Allah's Apostle doing it, I would not have done it. Sahib Bukhari Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith Number 205 Narrated by Hafs ben Asim, Ibn Umar went on a journey and said, I accompanied the Prophet and he did not offer optional prayers during the journey, and Allah says, Verily.
in Allah's Apostle you have a good example to follow. 33.21 Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith Number 206 Narrated by Ibn Umarah, I accompanied Allah's Apostle and he never offered more than two rakat during the journey. Abu Bakr, Umar, and Uthman used to do the same. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith Number 207 Narrated by Ibn Abu Layla, only Umhani told us that she had seen the Prophet, P.B.U.H., offering the Duha, forenoon prayer. She said, on the day of the conquest of Mecca, the Prophet took a bath in my house and offered eight rakat. I never saw him praying such a light prayer but he performed perfect prostration and bowing. Narrated Abdullah bin Amir that his father had told him that he had seen the Prophet, P.B.U.H., praying the waffle at night on the back of his mount on a journey, facing whatever direction it took. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith Number 208 Narrated by Salim bin Abdullah, Ibn Umar said, Allah's Apostle used to pray the Nawafal on the back of his mount, carriage, by signs facing any direction. Ibn Umar used to do the same. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith Number 209 Narrated by Salim's father, the Prophet used to offer the Makrib and Isha prayers together whenever he was in a hurry on a journey. Narrated Ibn Abbas, Allah's Apostle used to offer the Zur and Asr prayers together on journeys, and also used to offer the Makrib and Isha prayers together. Narrated Anas bin Malik, the Prophet used to offer the Makrib and the Isha prayers together on journeys. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith Number 210 Narrated by Azizuri, Salim told me, Abdullah bin Umar said, I saw Allah's Apostle delaying the Makrib prayer till he offered it along with the Isha prayer whenever he was in a hurry during the journey. Salim said, Abdullah bin Umar used to do the same whenever he was in a hurry during the journey. After making the call for Ikama, for the Makrib prayer he used to offer three rakat and then perform Taslim. After waiting for a short while, he would pronounce the Ikama for the Isha prayer and offer two rakat and perform Taslim. He never prayed any nawafal in between the two prayers or after the Isha prayers till he got up in the middle of the night, for Tahajjud prayer. Dot. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith Number 211 Narrated by Anas, Allah's Apostle used to offer these two prayers together on journeys i.e. the Makrib and the Isha. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith number 212. Narrated by Anas bin Malik, whenever the Prophet started a journey before noon, he used to delay the Zuhr prayer till the time of ASR and then offer them together, and if the sun declined, at noon, he used to offer the Zuhr prayer and then ride, for the journey. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith number 213. Narrated by Anas bin Malik, whenever the Prophet started the journey before noon, he used to delay the Zuhr prayer till the time for the ASR prayer and then he would dismount and pray them together, and whenever the sun declined before he started the journey he used to offer the Zuhr prayer and then ride, for the journey. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith Number 214 Narrated by Aisha, Allah's Apostle prayed in his house while sitting during his illness and the people prayed behind him standing and he pointed to them to sit down. When he had finished the prayer, he said, The Imam is to be followed and so when he bows you should bow, and when he lifts his head you should also do the same. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith Number 215 Narrated by Anas bin Malik, Allah's Apostle, P.B.U.H. fell down from a horse and his right side was either injured or scratched, so we went to inquire about his health. 
the time for the prayer became due and he offered the prayer while sitting and we prayed while standing. He said, the Imam is to be followed, so if he says takbir, you should also say takbir, and if he bows you should also bow, and when he lifts his head you should also do the same and if he says, Samia el Lahu Liman Hamidah, Allah hears whoever sends his praises to him, you should say, Ravana Waylakal Hamd, O our Lord. All the praises are for you. See Hadith number 656 Volume 1. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith number 216. Narrated by Imran bin Hussain, who had piles, I asked Allah's Apostle about the praying of a man while sitting. He said, if he prays while standing it is better and he who prays while sitting gets half the reward of that who prays standing, and whoever prays while lying gets half the reward of that who prays while sitting. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith Number 217 Narrated by Abdullah bin Burada, Imran bin Hussain had piles. Once Abu Mamar narrated from Imran bin Hussain had said, I asked the Prophet, p.b.u.h, about the prayer of a person while sitting. He said, it is better for one to pray standing, and whoever prays sitting gets half the reward of that who prays while standing, and whoever prays while lying gets half the reward of that who prays while sitting. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith Number 218 Narrated by Imran bin Hussain, had piles, so I asked the Prophet about the prayer. He said, pray while standing and if you can't, pray while sitting and if you cannot do even that, then pray lying on your side. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith Number 219 Narrated by Aisha, the mother of the faithful believers, I never saw Allah's Apostle offering the night prayer while sitting except in his old age and then he used to recite while sitting and whenever he wanted to bow he would get up and recite 30 or 40 verses, while standing, and then bow. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 20, Hadith Number 220 Narrated by Aisha, the mother of the faithful believers, Allah's Apostle, in his last days, used to pray sitting. He would recite while sitting, and when 30 or 40 verses remained from the recitation he would get up and recite them while standing and then he would bow and prostrate. He used to do the same in the second Rika. After finishing the prayer, he used to look at me and if I was awake he would talk to me and if I was asleep, he would lie down. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2 Book 21, Hadith Number 221 Narrated by Ibn Abbas, when the Prophet got up at night to offer the Tahajjud prayer, he used to say, Allah alaykul hamd. And takayim asama wadi wal rwa man fiana. Waylakul hamd, laka mulku sama wadi wal rwa man fiana. Waylakul hamd, and tanura sama wadi wal art. Waylakal Hamd, and Ta El Hak W A W A Duka El Hak, W A Lika Uka Hak, W A Quiluka Hak, Wal Janatu Hanwan Neru Hak Wanabiuna Hak. W A Muhammadun, Salal Lahu Alai Waisalam, Hak, was S A A T U Hak. Allahumma Islam to Laka Wabika Amantu, W A A Laka to Wakal to, W A I Laka Anap to W A Bika Kasam to, Wai Laka Hakam to Fak for Lima Kadam to Wama Akkar to Wama Azrar to Wama Elantu, and Ta El Mukadim Wa and Ta El Mu Akir, La Ilaha Illa and Ta, or La Ilaha Garika. O Allah! All the praises are for you, you are the holder of the heavens and the earth, and whatever is in them. All the praises are for you, you have the possession of the heavens and the earth and whatever is in them. All the praises are for you, you are the light of the heavens and the earth and all the praises are for you, you are the king of the heavens and the earth, and all the praises are for you, you are the truth and your promise is the truth, and to meet you is true, 
your word is the truth and paradise is true and hell is true and all the prophets, peace be upon them, are true, and Muhammad is true, and the day of resurrection is true. O Allah! I surrender, my will, to you, I believe in you and depend on you. And repent to you, and with your help I argue, with my opponents, the non-believers, and I take you as a judge, to judge between us. Please forgive me my previous and future sins, and whatever I concealed or revealed and you are the one who make, some people, forward and, some, backward. There is none to be worshipped but you. Sufyan said that Abdul Karim Abu Umayya added to the above, Walla hala walla kuwata illa billa, there is neither might nor power except with Allah. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 222 Narrated by Salim's father, in the lifetime of the Prophet whosoever saw a dream would narrate it to Allah's Apostle. I had a wish of seeing a dream to narrate it to Allah's Apostle, p.b.u.h, I was a grown-up boy and used to sleep in the mosque in the lifetime of the Prophet. I saw in the dream that two angels caught hold of me and took me to the fire which was built all round like a built well and had two poles in it and the people in it were known to me. I started saying, I seek refuge with Allah from the fire. Then I met another angel who told me not to be afraid. I narrated the dream to Hafsa who told it to Allah's apostle. The prophet said, Abdullah is a good man. I wish he prayed to Hajjud. After that Abdullah, i.e. Salim's father, used to sleep but a little at night. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 223 Narrated by Aisha, Allah's Apostle used to offer eleven rakat and that was his prayer. He used to prolong the prostration to such an extent that one could recite fifty verses, of the Quran, before he would lift his head. He used to pray two rakat, sunnah, before the fajr prayer and then used to lie down on his right side till the call maker came and informed him about the prayer. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 224 Narrated by Jundab, the Prophet became sick and did not get up, for Tahajjud prayer, for a night or two. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21 Hadith number 225. Narrated by Jundab bin Abdullah, Gabriel did not come to the Prophet, for some time, and so one of the Quraysh women said, His Satan has deserted him. So came the divine revelation, by the forenoon and by the night when it is still. Your Lord, O Muhammad, has neither forsaken you nor hated you. 93.123 Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 226 Narrated by Um Salama, one night the Prophet got up and said, Subhan Allah! How many afflictions Allah has revealed tonight and how many treasures have been sent down, disclosed! Go and wake the sleeping lady occupants of these dwellings up, for prayers, perhaps a well-dressed in this world may be naked in the hereafter. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 227 Narrated by Ali bin Abi Talib, One night Allah's Apostle came to me and Fatima, the daughter of the Prophet and asked, Won't you pray, at night? I said, O oh Allah's Apostle! Our souls are in the hands of Allah and if He wants us to get up He will make us get up. When I said that, he left us without saying anything and I heard that he was hitting his thigh and saying, but man is more quarrelsome than anything. 18.54 Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 228 Narrated by Aisha, Allah's Apostle used to give up a good deed, although he loved to do it, for fear that people might act on it and it might be made compulsory for them. The Prophet never prayed the Duha prayer, but I offer it. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, 
Hadith number 229. Narrated by Aisha, the mother of the faithful believers, one night Allah's apostle offered the prayer in the mosque and the people followed him. The next night he also offered the prayer and too many people gathered. On the third and the fourth nights more people gathered, but Allah's apostle did not come out to them. In the morning he said, I saw what you were doing and nothing but the fear that it, i.e. the prayer, might be enjoined on you, stopped me from coming to you. And that happened in the month of Ramadan. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 230 Narrated by al mugaira the Prophet used to stand, in the prayer, or pray till both his feet or legs swelled. He was asked why, he offered such an unbearable prayer, and he said, Should I not be a thankful slave? Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 231 Narrated by Abdullah bin Amr bin Alayz, Allah's Apostle told me, The most beloved prayer to Allah is that of David and the most beloved fasts to Allah are those of David. He used to sleep for half of the night and then pray for one third of the night and again sleep for its sixth part and used to fast on alternate days. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 232 Narrated by Masrak, I asked Aisha which deed was most loved by the Prophet. She said, a deed done continuously. I further asked, when did he use to get up? in the night for the prayer, dot. She said, he used to get up on hearing the crowing of a cock. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 233 Narrated by Alashaith, he, the Prophet, p.b.u.h, used to get up for the prayer on hearing the crowing of a cock. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21 Hadith number 234. Narrated by Aisha, in my house he, Prophet, p.b.u.h, never passed the last hours of the night but sleeping. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith number 235. Narrated by Katata, Anas bin Malik said, The Prophet, p.b.u.h, and Zayd bin Thabit took their suhur together. When they finished it, the Prophet stood for the Fajr prayer and offered it. We asked Anas, what was the interval between their finishing the suhur and the starting of the morning prayer? Anas replied, it was equal to the time taken by a person in reciting 50 verses of the Quran. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21 Hadith number 236. Narrated by Abu Wail, Abdullah said, One night I offered the Tahajjud prayer with the Prophet and he kept on standing till an ill thought came to me. We said, What was the ill thought? He said, It was to sit down and leave the Prophet, standing. Dot. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21. Hadith number 237. Narrated by Hud Haifat, whenever the Prophet got up for Tahajjud prayer he used to clean his mouth, and teeth, with Sawak. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith number 238. Narrated by Abdullah bin Umarah, a man said, O Allah's Apostle, how is the prayer of the night? He said, two rakat followed by two rakat and so on, and when you apprehend the approaching dawn, offer one rakat as with her. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 239 Narrated by Ibn Abbas, the prayer of the Prophet used to be of thirteen rakat, i.e. of the night prayer. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 240 Narrated by Masrak, I asked Aisha about the night prayer of Allah's Apostle and she said, it was seven, nine, or eleven rakat besides the two rakat of the Fajr prayer, i.e. Sunnah, dot. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, 
Hadith number 241. Narrated by Aisha, the Prophet, P.B.U.H., used to offer 13 rakat of the night prayer and that included the Witra and 2 rakat, Sunnah, of the Fajr prayer. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith number 242. Narrated by Anas bin Malik, sometimes Allah's Apostle would not fast, for so many days, that we thought that he would not fast that month and he sometimes used to fast, for so many days, that we thought he would not leave fasting throughout that month and, as regards his prayer and sleep at night, if you wanted to see him praying at night, you could see him praying and if you wanted to see him sleeping, you could see him sleeping. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 243 Narrated by Abu Huraira, Allah's Apostle said, Satan puts three knots at the back of the head of any of you if he is asleep. On every knot he reads and exhales the following words, The night is long, so stay asleep. When one wakes up and remembers Allah, one knot is undone, and when one performs ablution, the second knot is undone, and when one prays the third knot is undone and one gets up energetic with a good heart in the morning, otherwise one gets up lazy and with a mischievous heart. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 244 Narrated by Samara bin Jundab, the Prophet said in his narration of a dream that he saw, he whose head was being crushed with a stone was one who learned the Quran but never acted on it, and slept ignoring the compulsory prayers. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 245 Narrated by Abdullah, a person was mentioned before the Prophet, P.B.U.H., and he was told that he had kept on sleeping till morning and had not got up for the prayer. The Prophet said, Satan urinated in his ears. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 246 Narrated by Abu Huraira, Allah's Apostle, P.B.U.H., said, Our Lord, the Blessed, the Superior, comes every night down on the nearest heaven to us when the last third of the night remains, saying, Is there anyone to invoke me, so that I may respond to invocation? Is there anyone to ask me, so that I may grant him his request? Is there anyone seeking my forgiveness, so that I may forgive him? Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21 Hadith number 247. Narrated by Al Aswad, I asked Aisha how is the night prayer of the Prophet. She replied, he used to sleep early at night, and get up in its last part to pray, and then return to his bed. When the Mu'adhin pronounced the Adhan, he would get up. If he was in need of a bath he would take it, otherwise he would perform ablution and then go out, for the prayer. Dot. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 248 Narrated by Abu Salma bin Abdur Rahman, I asked Aisha, how is the prayer of Allah's Apostle during the month of Ramadan? She said, Allah's Apostle never exceeded 11 rakat in Ramadan or in other months, he used to offer 4 rakat, do not ask me about their beauty and length, then 4 rakat, do not ask me about their beauty and length, and then three rikat. Aisha further said, I said, O oh Allah's Apostle, do you sleep before offering the Witr prayer? He replied, O oh Aisha, my eyes sleep but my heart remains awake. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 249 Narrated by Aisha, I did not see the Prophet reciting, the Quran, in the night prayer while sitting except when he became old, when he used to recite while sitting, and when thirty or forty verses remained from the surah, he would get up and recite them and then bow. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 250 Narrated by Abu Huraira, 
At the time of the Fajr prayer the Prophet asked Bilal, Tell me of the best deed you did after embracing Islam, for I heard your footsteps in front of me in paradise. Bilal replied, I did not do anything worth mentioning except that whenever I performed ablution during the day or night, I prayed after that ablution as much as was written for me. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 251a Narrated by Anas bin Malik, once the Prophet, P.B.U.H., entered the mosque and saw a rope hanging in between its two pillars. He said, What is this rope? The people said, This rope is for Zainab who, when she feels tired, holds it, to keep standing for the prayer. The Prophet said, Don't use it. Remove the rope. You should pray as long as you feel active, and when you get tired, sit down. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 251b Narrated by Aisha, a woman from the tribe of Bani Asad was sitting with me and Allah's Apostle, P.B.U.H., came to my house and said, Who is this? I said, She is, so and so. She does not sleep at night because she is engaged in prayer. The Prophet said disapprovingly, Do, good, deeds which is within your capacity as Allah never gets tired of giving rewards till you get tired of doing good deeds. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 252 Narrated by Abdullah bin Amr bin Alayz, Allah's Apostle said to me, O oh Abdullah, do not be like so and so who used to pray at night and then stop the night prayer. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 253 Narrated by Ubaidah bin As-Summit, the Prophet whoever gets up at night and says, La ilaha illa wadahu la sharika lahu lahu al mulk wailahu al hamd wa huwa ala kula shayin qadir. Alhamdulillahi wa subhanallahi wa la ilaha illa la wa lahu akbar wa la hala wa la kuwata illa bi illa. None has the right to be worshipped but Allah. He is the only one and has no partners. For him is the kingdom and all the praises are due for him. He is omnipotent. All the praises are for Allah. All the glories are for Allah. And none has the right to be worshipped but Allah, and Allah is great and there is neither might nor power except with Allah. And then says, Allah Humma, I for Li, O Allah. Forgive me. Or invokes, Allah he will be responded to and if he performs ablution, and prays, his prayer will be accepted. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 254 Narrated by Abu Huraira, that once Allah's Apostle, P.B.U.H, said, Your brother, i.e. Abdullah bin Rawaha does not say obscene, referring to his verses, amongst us is Allah's Apostle, who recites his book when it dawns. He showed us the guidance, after we were blind. We believe that whatever he says will come true. And he spends his nights in such a way as his sides do not touch his bed. While the pagans were deeply asleep. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 255 Narrated by Nafi Ibn Umar said, In the lifetime of the Prophet I dreamt that a piece of silk cloth was in my hand and it flew with me to whichever part of paradise I wanted. I also saw as if two persons, i.e. angels, came to me and wanted to take me to hell. Then an angel met us and told me not to be afraid. He then told them to leave me. Hafsa narrated one of my dreams to the Prophet and the Prophet said, Abdullah is a good man. Would that he offer the night prayer, to Hajjud. So after that day Abdullah, Ben Umar, started offering to Hajjud. The companions of the Prophet, P.B.U.H., used to tell him their dreams that, Laylatul Qadr, was on the 27th of the month of Ramadan. 
The Prophet said, I see that your dreams agree on the last ten nights of Ramadan and so whoever is in search of it should seek it in the last ten nights of Ramadan. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 256 Narrated by Aisha, Allah's Apostle offered the Aisha prayer, and then got up at the Tahajjud time, and offered eight rakat and then offered two rakat while sitting. He then offered two rakat in between the Adhan and Ikama, of the Fajr prayer, and he never missed them. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 257 Narrated by Aisha, the Prophet used to lie down on his right side, after offering two rakat, Sunnah, of the Fajr prayer. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21 Hadith number 258. Narrated by Aisha, after offering the Sunnah of the Fajr prayer, the Prophet used to talk to me, if I happened to be awake, otherwise he would lie down till the Ikama call was proclaimed, for the Fajr prayer. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith number 259. Narrated by Aisha, after offering the two rakat, Sunnah, the Prophet, P.B.U.H., used to talk to me, if I happened to be awake, otherwise he would lie down. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 260 Narrated by Aisha, the Prophet was never more regular and particular in offering any nawafal than the two rakat, Sunnah, of the Fajr prayer. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2 Book 21, Hadith number 261. Narrated by Aisha, Allah's Apostle used to offer 13 rakat in the night prayer and on hearing the Adhan for the morning prayer, he used to offer two light rakat. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith number 262. Narrated by Aisha, the Prophet, P.B.U.H used to make the two rakat before the Fajr prayer so light that I would wonder whether he recited Al-Fatiha, or not. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 263 Narrated by Jabir bin Abdullah, the Prophet, P.B.U.H, used to teach us the way of doing Istikara, Istikara means to ask Allah to guide one to the right sort of action concerning any job or a deed, in all matters as he taught us the surahs of the Quran. He said, if any one of you thinks of doing any job he should offer a two rakat prayer other than the compulsory ones and say, after the prayer Allah Hama Ini Astakaruka by Ilmika, W.A. Astakdairuka by Kudratika, W.A. Azalakam in Fadlika Alazlam Fayanaka Tak Dairu Walla Ak Dairu, W.A. Talamu Walla Alamu, W.A. Anta Alamu El Guyab. Alahama, in Kunta Talam Anna Had Ha Alamra Karun Lifi Dini W.A. Mayashi W.A. Akabati Amri, or Ajili Amri W.A. Ajili, Factor Hu W.A. Yasser Hu Lithama Barik Lifi I. W.A. in Kunta Talamu Anna Had Halam Rashar Run Lifi Dini W.A. Mayashi W.A. Akabati Amri, or Fiajili Amri W.A. Ajili, Fasrif Hu Ani was Ripni Anhu. Wake Thur Li Al Karahathu Kana Thuma Ardenai Bihi. O Allah! I ask guidance from your knowledge, and power from your might, and I ask for your great blessings. You are capable, and I am not. You know and I do not and you know the unseen. O oh Allah! If you know that this job is good for my religion and my subsistence and in my hereafter. Or said, if it is better for my present and later needs. Then you ordain it for me and make it easy for me to get, and then bless me in it, and if you know that this job is harmful to me in my religion and subsistence and in the hereafter. Or said, if it is worse for my present and later needs. Then keep it away from me and let me be away from it. And ordain for me whatever is good for me, and make me satisfied with it. The Prophet added that then the person should name, mention, his need. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, 
Hadith number 264. Narrated by Abu Qatayda bin Rabi al Ansari, the Prophet said, If any one of you enters a mosque, he should not sit until he has offered a Turakat prayer. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith number 265. Narrated by Anas bin Malik, Allah's Apostle led us and offered a Turakat prayer and then went away. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith number 266. Narrated by Abdullah bin Umar Abu Ai offered with Allah's Apostle a two rakat prayer before the Zuhr prayer and two rakat after the Zuhr prayer, two rakat after Jamua, Makrib, and Isha prayers. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith number 267. Narrated by Jabir bin Abdullah, while delivering a sermon, Allah's Apostle said, if any one of you comes while the Imam is delivering the sermon or has come out for it, he should offer a two rakat prayer. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 268 Narrated by Mujahid, somebody came to the house of Ibn Umar and told him that Allah's apostles had entered the Kabiyya. Ibn Umar said, I went in front of the Kabiyya and found that Allah's Apostle had come out of the Kabiyya and I saw Bilal standing by the side of the gate of the Kabiyya. I said, O oh Bilal, has Allah's Apostle, P.B.U.H, prayed inside the Kabiyya? Bilal replied in the affirmative. I said, Where, did he pray? He replied, He prayed between these two pillars and then he came out and offered a two-rakat prayer in front of the Kabiyya. Abu Abdullah said, Abu Huraira said, The Prophet, P.B.U.H, advised me to offer two-rakat of Duha prayer, prayer to be offered after sunrise and before midday. Itban, bin Malik, said, Allah's Apostle, P.B.U.H, and Abu Bakr, came to me after sunrise and we aligned behind the Prophet, P.B.U.H, and offered two rakat. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 269 Narrated by Ibn Umar, I offered with the Prophet two rakat before the Zuhr and two rakat after the Zuhr prayer, two rakat after Makrib, Isha, and the Jamua prayers. Those of the Makrib and Isha were offered in his house. My sister Hafsa told me that the Prophet used to offer two light rakat after dawn and it was the time when I never went to the Prophet. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 270 Narrated by Amr, I heard Abu Ashshadi H. A. Jabir saying, I heard Ibn Abbas saying, I offered with Allah's Apostle 8 rakat, of Zuhr and Asr prayers, together and seven rakat, the Makrib and the Isha prayers, together. I said, O oh Abu Ashchitha, I think he must have prayed the Zuhr late and the Asr early, the Isha early and the Makrib late. Abu Ashchadi Ha said, I also think so. See Hadith number 518 Volume 1. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2. Book 21, Hadith number 271. Narrated by Muwarik, I asked Ibn Umar do you offer the Duha prayer? He replied in the negative. I further asked, did Umar use to pray it? He, Ibn Umar, replied in the negative. I again asked, did Abu Bakr use to pray it? He replied in the negative. I again asked, did the Prophet use to pray it? Ibn Umar replied, I don't think he did. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 272 Narrated by Abdur Rahman bin Abi Lila, only Umhani narrated to me that she had seen the Prophet offering the Duha prayer. She said, on the day of the conquest of Mecca, the Prophet entered my house, took a bath and offered eight rakat, of duha prayers. 
I had never seen the Prophet offering such a light prayer but he performed bowing and prostrations perfectly. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 273 Narrated by Aisha, I never saw the Prophet offering the Duha prayer but I always offer it. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 274 Narrated by Abu Huraira, my friend, the Prophet, advised me to do three things and I shall not leave them till I die, these are, to fast three days every month, to offer the Duha prayer, and to offer Witr before sleeping. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 275 T. Narrated by Anas bin Sirin, I heard Anas bin Malik al-Ansari saying, an Ansari man, who was very fat, said to the Prophet, I am unable to present myself for the prayer with you. He prepared a meal for the Prophet and invited him to his house. He washed one side of a mat with water and the Prophet offered two rikat on it. So and so, the son of so and so, the son of al Yarid asked Anas, did the Prophet use to offer the duha prayer? Anas replied, I never saw him praying, the Duha prayer, except on that day. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 275 Narrated by Ib An Umar, I remember ten rikat of Nawafal from the Prophet, two rikat before the Zuhr prayer and two after it, two rikat after Makrib prayer in his house, and two rikat after Isha prayer in his house, and two rikat before the Fajr prayer and at that time nobody would enter the house of the Prophet Hafsa told me that the Prophet used to offer two rikat after the call maker had made the Adhan and the day had dawned. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 276 Narrated by Aisha, the Prophet never missed four rikat before the Zuhr prayer and two rikat before the Fajr prayer. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 277 Narrated by Abdullah al-Muni, the Prophet said, Pray before the Makrib, compulsory, prayer. He, said it thrice, and in the third time, he said, Whoever wants to offer it can do so. He said so because he did not like the people to take it as a tradition. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 278 Narrated by Marthad bin Abdullah al-Yazani, I went to Uqba bin Amir al-Juhani and said, Is it not surprising that A.B. Itamim offers two rikat before the Makrib prayer? Uqba said, We used to do so in the lifetime of Allah's Apostle. I asked him, What prevents you from offering it now? He replied, Business. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 279 Narrated by Mahmud bin A.R. Rabi al-Ansari, that he remembered Allah's Apostle and he also remembered a mouthful of water which he had thrown on his face, after taking it from a well that was in their house. Mahmud said that he had heard it Ban bin Malik, who was present with Allah's Apostle in the Battle of Badr saying, I used to lead my people at Bani Salim in the prayer and there was a valley between me and those people. Whenever it rained it used to be difficult for me to cross it to go to their mosque. So I went to Allah's Apostle and said, I have weak eyesight and the valley between me and my people flows during the rainy season and it becomes difficult for me to cross it, I wish you would come to my house and pray at a place so that I could take that place as a praying place. Allah's Apostle said, I will do so. So Allah's Apostle and Abu Bakr came to my house in the, next, morning after the sun had risen high. Allah's Apostle asked my permission to let him in and I admitted him. He did not sit before saying, where do you want us to offer the prayer in your house? I pointed to the place where I wanted him to pray. So Allah's Apostle stood up for the prayer and started the prayer with Takbir and we aligned in rows behind him, and he offered two rikat, and finished them with Taslim, and we also performed Taslim with him. 
I detained him for a meal called Hazir which I had prepared for him. Hazir is a special type of dish prepared from barley flour and meat soup. When the neighbors got the news that Allah's apostle was in my house, they poured it till there were a great number of men in the house. One of them said, What is wrong with Malik, for I do not see him. One of them replied, He is a hypocrite and does not love Allah and his apostle. On that Allah's apostle said, Don't say this. Haven't you seen that he said, None has the right to be worshipped but Allah for Allah's sake only. The man replied, Allah and his apostle know better, but by Allah, we never saw him but helping and talking with the hypocrites. Allah's apostle replied, No doubt, whoever says. None has the right to be worshipped but Allah, and by that he wants the pleasures of Allah, then Allah will save him from hell. Mahmud added, I told the above narration to some people, one of whom was Abu Ayyub, the companion of Allah's apostle in the battle in which he, Abu Ayyub, died and Yazid bin Mu'a was their leader in Roman territory. Abu Ayyub denounced the narration and said, I doubt that Allah's apostle ever said what you have said. I felt that too much, and I vowed to Allah that if I remained alive in that holy battle, I would, go to Medina and, ask it Ban bin Malik if he was still living in the mosque of his people. So when he returned, I assumed Iram for Hajj or Umrah and then I proceeded until I reached Medina. I went to Bani Salim and it Ban bin Malik, who was by then an old blind man, was leading his people in the prayer. When he finished the prayer, I greeted him and introduced myself to him and then asked him about that narration. He told that narration again in the same manner as he had narrated it the first time. Sahib Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 280 Narrated by Ibn Umar, Allah's Apostle said, Offer some of your prayers in your houses and do not make them graves. Sahib Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 281 Narrated by Qusayi, I heard Abu Said saying four words. He said, I heard the Prophet, saying the following narrative, dot. He had participated in twelve holy battles with the Prophet. Narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet said, Do not set out on a journey except for three mosques i.e. al masjid i haram the Mosque of Allah's Apostle, and the Mosque of Al-Aqsa, Mosque of Jerusalem. Dot. Sahib Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 282 Narrated by Abu Huraira, Allah's Apostle said, One prayer in my mosque is better than one thousand prayers in any other mosque excepting al masjid i haram Sahib Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 283 Narrated by Nafi, Ibn Umar never offered the Duha prayer except on two occasions. One whenever he reached Mecca, and he always used to reach Mecca in the forenoon. He would perform tawaf round the Kabiyah and then offer two rakat at the rear of Makam Ibrahim. Two whenever he visited Cuba, for he used to visit it every Saturday. When he entered the mosque, he disliked to leave it without offering a prayer. Ibn Umar narrated that Allah's apostle used to visit the mosque of Cuba, sometime, walking and, sometime, riding. And he, i.e. Ibn Umar, used to say, I do only what my companions used to do and I don't forbid anybody to pray at any time during the day or night except that one should not intend to pray at sunrise or sunset. Sahib Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 284 Narrated by Abdullah bin Dinar, Ibn Umar said, The Prophet used to go to the Mosque of Cuba every Saturday, sometimes, walking and, sometimes, riding. Abdullah, Ibn Umar, used to do the same. Sahib Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21 Hadith number 285. Narrated by Ibn Umar, 
the Prophet used to go to the mosque of Cuba, sometimes, walking and sometimes riding. Added Nafi, in another narration, he then would offer two rakat, in the mosque of Cuba. Dot. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 286 Narrated by Abdullah bin Zayd al-Mazini, Allah's Apostle said, Between my house and the pulpit there is a garden of the gardens of paradise. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 287 Narrated by Abu Huraira, the Prophet said, between my house and my pulpit there is a garden of the gardens of paradise, and my pulpit is on my fountain tank, i.e. Al-Kothar, dot. Sahih Bukhari Volume 2, Book 21, Hadith Number 288 Narrated by Kaza Imala, freed slave of, Ziad, I heard Abu said Al-Qudri narrating four things from the Prophet and I appreciated them very much. He said, conveying the words of the Prophet. 1. A woman should not go on a two-day journey except with her husband or a daimaram. 2. No fasting is permissible on two days, id al-fitr and id al-adha. 3. No prayer after two prayers, i.e. after the fajr prayer till the sun rises and after the asr prayer till the sun sets. 4. Do not prepare yourself for a journey except to three mosques, i.e. al masjid i haram the Mosque of Aqsa, Jerusalem, and my mosque.